say that I've done a few videos on this idea of exploring how convergence devices can potentially, may or may not, replace separate counterpart devices, you know, by setting out to sort of do the roles of multiple products in one simple convenient product. And, and the interesting thing is how often actually uh, the separate devices can actually come in at similar or even less cost than the convergence product. So it's quite an interesting thing to think about. And in this case, we're gonna look at how a Leatherman can compare with separate products. And, and for me, this is really interesting because I carried the Leatherman rebar for a while. It's a good multi-tool, it's got lots in it, but it's quite heavy for what it is. And it is not actually that good at distributing the weight in your pockets. It kind of condenses it all into one quite lumpy kind of product and it's quite expensive. So really the main reason I used to carry a Leatherman was for the uh, pliers and the bit driver. And I carried the bit driver with these double-ended bits and the little extension is quite a cool setup. You can fit a lot of different bits in, in quite a small package. And in terms of the pliers, kind of the main reason I found myself using those was for undoing nuts. So I saw these things, the Knipex Cobra XS on the Best Damn EDC channel, and they look really interesting. Like, that looks like a really interesting little tool. What is that? You know, is it potentially better, a better set of pliers than the set of pliers on a Leatherman? And, you know, it's particularly designed for undoing nuts, which was the main reason I had the pliers on the Leatherman. So I was really interested in this, and, and I did a few, uh, watched a few videos on these, and they seem to be brilliant. People really like them. They're really strong, really light, and really good at undoing nuts. So yeah, it's a good start so far. So I sort of explored this idea a little bit further. So the reason these Knipex are so good at undoing nuts is because of this sort of angled uh, latching effect you get. So as you twist it to turn the nut, it kind of clamps tighter on the nut and it just works really well for undoing nuts. And with the Leatherman pliers, it's, you know, you've got this basically as you as you rotate them, the force of the nut kind of just pushes them apart. Uh, it doesn't really lock on in the same way that these Knipex things do. And um, so that's, that's quite an important distinction there. So these things can grip nuts up to 24 millimeters. And once they're locked on, you can kind of just keep pushing as hard as you like and they don't slip off. Um, obviously with only a four inch handle, that, that sort of rotational force that you can put down with your hands is fairly limited, but I think that's obviously just kind of the way it is with something that's small enough to fit in your pockets. So I did wonder how they'd compare with just uh, the Leatherman for kind of just general gripping, you know, I don't know, holding a, a wire or something just as a general gripping tool. And obviously the slip joint does make it a little bit more fiddly, but then there's no folding. So with the Leatherman, you've got to fold them out and, and open and close them. So I think on balance, there's probably not much difference in terms of the fiddliness and how good they are in terms of just gripping something. So the tip is really precise and it has no problem gripping really fine things like splinters or the little pins for these sockets on this keyboard. So do check out the videos I've done on that keyboard if you're interested. But basically, you know, holding fine things with the tip of these things, it has no trouble at all. It's, it's precise enough for fine work as well. So what about the bit driver side of things? So with the Leatherman, you know, these double-ended bits, they, on the face of it, they seem like a really good idea. Uh, but actually the thing with these Leatherman bits is they're really soft. You know, you don't, you don't have to put a lot of torque into them to just twist the flatheads. You can see them just twisting and rounding off the Phillips and the posi drives is pretty easy as well. And, you know, so it's kind of this frustrating idea that it's a nice idea on the face of it, but in reality, you can't put a lot of torque through them. And in reality, the fiddliness is not that great with the Leatherman either. You've got this extension, which you have to put on before you can put the bits on and you, you know you've got this little extra sort of piece where there's a, a weak spot and you don't have to put much force through it to see the whole thing twisting and it's so it's all a little bit you know a bit cumbersome and, and not very stable so what I was after was some sort of super light super fast bit driver kit that would offer a better experience than the Leatherman would offer now, funnily enough, actually finding this took a long time. There's quite a few options out there, but they've all seemed to have kind of a compromise somewhere. Like they're either not that many bits or they're not that much space for bits in there, um, or the opening for the bit into the handle doesn't allow you to get the thing into a small space because of the shape of the handle, or they're, you know, they're really expensive, and it's kind of all the, always a compromise somewhere. So I eventually stumbled across this kind of L-shaped bit driver kit, and this is just fantastic. You know, I've never seen such an elegant, uh, sort of set of design principles working together. You know, the L-shaped handle obviously allows you for choosing between sort of extra reach or just really good torque. And the shape made by the L-shape lets you fit this plastic piece which holds your bits. So it just works fantastically well. Um, the plastic thing where the bits go is super lightweight and just, you know, the space can literally be filled up with bits. And it comes with some bits already but leaves you the space to add your own to create the right kind of collection of bits that you want to carry. Uh, so it's just an, an unbelievably effective, very light, very cheap, um, perfect kind of bit driver kit. And it's so small as well, yet you still get this leverage potential if you want to, or the extra reach if you go the other way around. It's just, just brilliant. So inside each end of the handle, you've got a little uh, clasp that locks the bit in place as well. Uh, it's not magnetic, it just uses a, a sort of spring that fits into the groove in the bit. And this just uses normal hex bits as well. So you, you can build a kit using really high quality hex bits. You 
haven't got to rely on uh, sort of specific proprietary bits. So these are, are marketed as a Victorinox product um, on the shops that you can see them available on it. But it's a bit weird because I can't actually see this on Victorinox's own website. Uh, so I don't know if it's something that they've discontinued. I think if that's the case, it would be a real shame because it really is an amazing product. So we're still missing a few useful tools from the Leatherman uh, from these two kind of devices uh, if we're looking at replacing the Leatherman with them. Uh, so we're, we're missing the saw, we're missing scissors, and we're missing the awl. Uh, all those three things are kind of quite useful in the Leatherman. So the scissors I think we can kind of replace quite easily with just carrying a, this little tiny Victorinox and this is so small and so light it can fit it anywhere, uh, just in your wallet or whatever. And that's an easy one. And that's got a UK legal knife on there as well. So yeah, nice little useful tool to keep and that solves the scissor thing. And then in terms of the saw, well, you can carry a wire saw, slip that into a pouch somewhere in your pocket, no weight to it at all, and that kind of solves that problem. Um, so the only thing that I'm left with missing is the awl. Uh, it is useful to have an awl, you know, you never know when you might need to kind of bore a hole through something to thread something through or something like that. It's not something you use that often, but it kind of can be handy if you did need to do that. So I'm still missing that. So in terms of weight, we've got this really interesting thing. So even though it's separate components, it still weighs less than the rebar and the bit kit. And there's another advantage to this in that you can spread that weight out because it is separate components. You can spread the weight out across different pockets. So it's, it carries in your pockets easier. And that's just brilliant. So the other interesting part of these discussions is looking at the economics of it. And we've got another nice surprise there too. The total cost of the separate things is still cheaper than the rebar. And there's one amazing killer advantage to this approach in that you've now got the ability to hold a nut with the pliers while you tighten a screw on the back of it with the screwdriver, uh, which of course you can never do with the Leatherman approach. So that's a really lovely byproduct of this idea of using separate devices. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a look around the channel. There's something for everyone. Hopefully you'll agree it's worth subscribing and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.